Hello all you beautiful people, my name is Zach Daddy. Today we're going to be talking about how to film yourself when skateboarding. I recently put out a video part, all self film clips of me, I'll leave a link up above, so I figured what better time to talk about how to film yourself on a skateboard. I'm going to break this down to five simple tips on how to film yourself when skateboarding. I'm just going to be skating my backyard DIY skate spot since I am on my lunch break right now. It's going to be a really quick video, but I figured it'd be kind of fun to tap into some of the things that I do almost on every single skate edit that I make of myself. So that's what we're going to get into today, breaking it down to five simple steps. Now probably a really obvious and first thing you think about is you need a tripod to film yourself or something of that nature. Now you don't necessarily need a tripod or gorilla pod which is what I'm using right now. You just need something to set your phone or camera on whether it be a rock, trash can, water bottle, anything really and that's all you're going to need. So basically you need a recording device and we're going to utilize static composition static lock shots and that was my first tip is just knowing composition and understanding composition using the role of thirds and I'll leave links down below into all these kind of compositions because this could be a whole video about composition but essentially what I'm talking about is establishing your in and out points in a composition since it's static a lot of times you can set up your composition or set up your angle to where you're going in you're doing the trick and you're leaving the frame right, so I'm gonna get warmed up try my first tricks I haven't skated at all today it is my lunch break so give me a little bit of slack if the skating in this video isn't anything up to your par. First thing with composition is planning your in and out points. Like I was saying, it's really just about planning it all out. When it, com when it comes to composition and just filming yourself, it's really planning it out. So I know I'm gonna throw down up by my garage. I'm gonna come down and hit this quarter pipe. So for the first composition, I really wanna be far back so I can get everything. I can see my throw down, I can see the trick, I can see the rollway. So essentially I'm keeping everything in frame, a really basic lock shot. Let's get that first. All right, so I just set my camera on the floor. As you see, I just locked it off. I got a really far, a wide shot as they call it. You can see me coming in, doing the back pivot. And the first time I went back towards where I started and then I realized I actually want to end by the camera. So I'm coming in, doing a trick and then ending by the camera. Cause if I roll towards the camera, it's a good way to set up for the next clip. Now my next tip can be hard if you're trying a really hard trick, but you can utilize that. I'll get that towards the end of this video, but it is mixing up and changing your angles constantly. So the idea being that you don't have too much of the same shot and you don't want to do the trick too many times in the same shot unless you do it multiple times with different shots. And what I mean by that is you can do maybe four or five tricks at the same angle and then move your camera and do those same four or five tricks and move your camera again, do the same four or five tricks and then you could split and tie things together. And it's more exciting because if you just have one locked in tripod shot and you're doing all your tricks in one, it can be really boring. You want to excite the viewer. You want to give them a different perspective, a different angle of the trick, of the thing you're skating, everything like that. It just makes it more exciting. If you're swimming the same locked position, get really boring. So. I'm gonna try a backside pivot in tons of different angles and kind of just show you how it can look a lot different and you can utilize a really simple trick by just mixing up your angles. Now the other thing that you want to do when you're constantly trying the trick and you're switching up your angles is experiment. See what angle you like the most so that you know what looks the best. So when you're constantly switching up, just try different things, put things in the foreground, the background, put it in tons of different locations. As you can see, this is a really basic trick, just backside pivot on a quarter pipe, but you can make it exciting with tons of different angles, maybe getting in the trees. I mean, I'm doing really bare minimum work here, but you can get really creative with this technique and constantly just experimenting essentially. And that way it just adds a little more spice, a little more flavor. If you're trying a trick and you fall, you can even change the angle then. You can use the roll up from the fall. 
Now the next tip I have for you, the third tip, is getting an establishing shot. This is something I forget about quite often because a lot of times when we're skating and we're just thinking about the trick and that is the focus. Most of the time, maybe you're throwing down your skateboard, rolling away from the spot even though you already landed it, different, different perspective. So yeah, that's important. Establishing shot, throwing down, getting to the spot, but also establishing shot of landing the trick can also be something you can add to skateboarding. I think it's really important. So right now I'll give you an example of just throwing down some different angles of throwing down, then I'll add a trick and then I'll have establish a shot after it. So it makes it more of a full story versus just a clip in. The thing that I think is really important with this and you don't want to forget this is because if you have a ski edit, it's just trick, 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 trick it's not as exciting it almost devalues each trick because all of a sudden you're like well it's just trick skating and you you just i don't know it doesn't give it as much as a shelf you want to give it a shelf you want to give the trick a podium essentially so having your stopping shop is essentially like getting stairs to your podium essentially so yeah you don't want it to be constant tricks you want establishing shots that way it also allows for the viewer to dissect the skating and appreciate it where if it's just skate tricks constantly it's harder to appreciate Tip number four is getting more B-roll. So you have your establishing shot, but you also need to get B-roll. So like right here, I can set my board into a pivot position just so I can show what I'm gonna do, kind of show the trick. I was blowing off my whole driveway earlier because these trees drop all these little pellets on the ground. So I had to blow off the whole driveway and I filmed that instead of just doing it and then starting to skate. So getting all those kind of B-roll, other shots outside of the skateboarding environment, it could be showing up to the skate spot, jumping a fence, going under a fence. It could be waxing, lacquering something up. Getting those B-rolls I think is important because again, you don't want it to be just constant tricks and just hard to decipher A-roll. You want B-roll and A-roll. You want to be able to mix the clips in there and tell a little bit of a story. My fifth and final tip is adding a little bit of spice, a little bit of your flavor, and how I've done that is adding fake motion to static shots. And I'm gonna jump into Adobe Premiere here and show you how I do that. All right, so I just opened Adobe Premiere. I dropped in a clip. Now, I'm going to zoom in on the clip about 20%. So I hit your 120, and then I'm gonna move the clip over to the left by using the positioning tool in the motion tab and then i'm punching in a keyframe this is how you do in adobe premiere there's tons of different ways to do this effect but you'll get the idea so i'm going to move my clip to the left and then i'm going to move it to the right and then i'm going to keyframe again moving the actual canvas to the right that way you get a little bit of a dolly effect like this All right, now it is time for some lunch. I just got some Chick-fil-A. Normally not a Chick-fil-A person, but I'm gonna do it today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you smash that like button if you did enjoy it. Let me know if you want more like behind the scenes of how I film these videos, because I'm always down to show you how I do it. Subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next one. Mash.